That's our Hakeem Dermish setting the tone. Sunday's in September. You know what that means. Time to take a look at the numbers, and we sift through the uncertainty with two of our finest, the Wizard of Odds, Kenny White, and Sportsline analyst Emery Hunt. Fellas, let's start with what very well could have been our Super Bowl matchup last season. That's the Bills and the Rams on Thursday night kicking off the season. What more appropriate matchup? Uh, defending champs here historically, 19-3 and in Week 1 since the turn of the millennium, but... It's a Buffalo squad that's got a lot working for them. Uh, Kenny, what's your initial reaction to the game numbers when you take a look? Well, this is a, a, a great opening game, obviously, because mm -hmm. we two teams, as you mentioned, Joe, could have played for the Super Bowl last year and could play for the Super Bowl this year. So uh, we're, we're excited to get game one going. And I love the Bills offense. We've seen what they've done just in two preseason games. They look electric already. Uh, the Rams, we know what their offense is going to be. Sean McVay still one of the top offensive geniuses in, in the NFL. Now, this line was the Rams minus one. There was word about Stafford and his shoulder, elbow, uh, not 100%. The line jumped to Buffalo two, two and a half. But it stayed there. It hasn't moved. We know Stafford's playing. He's fine. Uh, I was kind of surprised that number hasn't moved. You mentioned the Super Bowl uh, team success. Um, so I'm kind of surprised the Rams are an underdog in this game. But the play that I like the most is the over. Uh, it's, it's the NFL. It's the passing, like two of the best offenses in the entire NFL that are going to go head to head and lock horns in this game. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I think it's going to be back and forth. Uh, you're going to see this total go up. It's going to close probably in the 53 and a half, 54 range. So mm. get it over now. You know, I'm going to lay the points with Buffalo in this game. Uh, both teams, quiet as kept, have a lot of questions coming in. Buffalo has some injury concerns, and we know defensively they're going to be without Tredavious White. We talked a little bit about Stafford and his elbow. Didn't play in the preseason at all. But I think it all boils down to who has the better quarterback in this game. And you can trust Josh Allen more so than you can trust Matt Stafford. I see a sloppy rock fight, a week one type of game in the NFL. You're quote-unquote, fourth preseason game. So I'm going to go with Buffalo here because I could trust him just a little bit more so right now going into the season than the Rams. All right, so that's a nod for Buffalo and a play on the over. Uh, taking it to the Sunday slate here. Handful of divisional matchups, six to be specific in week one. That includes the Saints and the Falcons. And again, we're sort of looking at historical indicators here in week one with little precedent to go off of. Uh, dogs are going off at better than a 76% clip in week one divisional game since 2014. Trend would in turn take us here to the Dirty Birds, but I know no one's beating the Saints drum harder than Emory Hunt this season. Emory, take it. Yeah, let's sit. Let's all get a chair and sit along the line of scrimmage because <laughs> that's where this game is going to be won. The Falcons' offensive line is a, is a big question mark coming into the season. The Saints' defensive line is their strength on that side of the football. Offensively, their offensive line is a strength as well over the Atlanta Falcons. And we saw how Jameis Winston looked in his first live action since the knee injury back on October 30. I want to say Halloween it was the 31st and he looked sharp against the Chargers in the preseason. I know it's preseason but the Saints still can run the football. They still have Alvin Kamara. They still beat you up on both sides of the line of scrimmage. That'll be enough to cover the spread here so I like the Saints. I'm going to go over the total. I, I think these are I you know I actually like the Atlanta Falcons offensive line. I think that might even be the strength of their team this year. Uh, Marcus Mariota I think is going to be a solid quarterback he was one of the I thought one of the best uh, backups in the NFL I think he's going to put up points on the board I think Atlanta's offense is actually going to be above average this year where their defense that's the weakness of this Atlanta football team they're a below average football team the the Saints offensive line one of the best in the NFL uh, Winston did look great against the Chargers he looked in the best shape I've ever seen him in and I think this offense will click on all cylinders 43 is a low NFL total. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go over with these two, which I think both have better offenses than their defense. Yeah, the game is so predicated towards offense right now. Sometimes it does take offenses a couple extra weeks to get clicking with the complexity of these game plans, but we'll see if we can get points of plenty in that matchup with defense coming at a premium, guys. A uh, couple of year two QBs going to clash on the always sketchy surface that is Soldier Field. Justin Fields looking to make strides while Trey Lance looks to get out of the gate successfully. Niners are laying a touchdown and an extra point on the road. Bears specifically here 0-5 as a home dog last season. That did include a loss to San Francisco. Kenny, I sense a trend forming here. Early season targeting totals. Are you sticking to a total in this one as well? Yeah, I, I am. And I'm, you know, comparing my numbers to what the betting line is and, you know, my my sides on those first couple of games were, were right there. But the totals... I think are a little too low in most of these games. 41 and a half. This is the NFL. It's a passing league. I know it's San Francisco and Shannon, and he loves to run the football. But this is the Chicago Bears defense. I have them ranked 29th in the NFL. 
Um, I think Trey Lance is going to be able to open up the field with his arm strength. He's going to be able to use his legs. He's also going to make some mistakes because he's a young quarterback. And Justin Fields is identical. Same type of player. He's going to be able to stretch the field with that arm. He's going to be able to use his legs to make plays. But he's also inexperienced, and he's going to he's going to create some turnovers that uh, maybe create some short fields. So I'm going to go over 41 and a half here. You know, this will be the one game that I would stay away from because there are so many unknown facets of it. But I will say this. I think Justin Fields will outperform Trey Lance in this game. I still worry about the Bears up front along the offensive line going against his front seven of San Francisco. That may be the difference. And San Francisco will be able to run the football until proven otherwise. So for that, you know, case, I'm going to go with the 49ers. I'm going to lay those points. But, man, it's going to be fascinating to watch how Justin Fields uh, circumvents this whole offensive line issue, although they were solid in that game against the Browns, but hopefully that can carry over to the preseason, I mean, to the regular season. But I have to trust the Niners here. Getting it from all angles here. My analysts picking against my team, uh, talking about my defense as a 29th rank. I'm getting my producer in my ear, uh, giving me a hard time about full screens. The season hasn't even started, guys. We will get to the Bears' slander, but uh, a couple of solid picks there early. Early on at Soldier Field, we'll see how those two young QBs show out and show up. Uh, AFC champs going to look to back up their Cinderella run a year ago as Burrow and the Bengals open up, welcoming a new-look Steelers squad. Since he did sweep Pittsburgh last season straight up and against the number, but you also have the O-line that led up the most sacks a season ago, facing off with last year's sack champ. Uh, Emery, what catches your eye in this one? Cincinnati's defense got better, and I feel like in this matchup, when you're facing a team that does have talent at wide receiver, don't get me wrong, they have talent at tight end, but you worry about Kenny Pickett, Mitch Trubisky, Mason Rudolph, whoever's going to get the start, going up against an improved Bengals defense that can get to the quarterback and they have guys on the back end led by Jesse Bates, the safety, that can take the ball away. So I see this short passing game not having a lot of success against Cincinnati and those excellent athletic linebackers. So I love the Bengals in this spot not because of the tremendous offense they have, but because their defense will give them those added possessions. Well, hard to lay points in a, in a division game, Emory. In, the, in week one, as Joe mentioned, uh, the dogs do very, very well, and I think it's the extra time to prepare. Mm. I'm also I'm leaning to Pittsburgh in this game, but I love the game under the total, uh, 44 and a half. And the first thing you think of when you think of Cincinnati, think offense. And uh, people are going to think, well, I got to go over at Cincinnati. It's Burrow. It's Chase. Um, but you're right, this is an improved Cincinnati defense. Um, I have them ranked eighth in the NFL, but it's the Pittsburgh defense that I'm going to lean on here. I think they're the second best defense in the entire NFL. This defense is going to be the strength all season. The offense is a weakness, 27th right now I have them ranked. So if, if Pittsburgh's going to win, it's going to be in a low-scoring football game and go under the total. It always blows my mind, guys. We come into the season with what we feel like is a picture of each one of these teams, and we're usually wrong about about a third of them. But a successful offseason does have the arrow pointing up for Nick Sirianni and the Eagles. We'll see if they can really bring that vision to fruition here with some of the belief that's behind them. But facing the Lions team that isn't expected to be as easy of an out as they've been for the last half decade. Uh, Lions boasted the third-best record ATS last year despite having the second-worst record straight up. Catching four here at home, 48 and a half is a total. Kenny White, what gives? Yeah, you're right, Joe. You know that uh, I'm, I'm power rating my teams out on, on talent, and sometimes talent just doesn't uh, mm -hmm. have the continuity that it needs. So sometimes that it, it doesn't mesh. And uh, the Philadelphia Eagles are a team I'm hoping meshes. I think they have the second-best offensive line in the NFL. They've got a, gr a great run scheme offense, and that sets up the pass for Jalen Hurts. I think this offense is going to be dynamic this year. I think they're going to be outstanding. Their defense is below average. And Detroit, uh, they're the same thing. I've had their, their offense, it's an average offense with Jared Goff, but their defense I have ranked 32nd in the NFL. The Lions defense dead last. Yeah, they're worse than the Bears, Joe. So that's, that's a feather <laughs> in the Bears cap that the Lions Appreciate have a worse it. defense. I'm going over 48 in this one. Listen, last time these two teams played were, were la was last year, and – you know, the Eagles offense was a well-oiled machine. They beat the brakes off the Lions, and they were firing pistons all over the place. That's all the Motor City references I'm going to throw out there <laughs> for this matchup. But I will say this about the Eagles. The run game is what took flight last year against Detroit. Detroit should be improved in the run game, but the Eagles passing offense got better because of the added weapons. So now they have two number ones in A.J. Brown and Devonta Smith. I think that's going to be able to help the Eagles play with whatever type of offense they want to play on any given day. And their defense got significantly better, which was a huge problem last year for them. So I see that pressure on the outside being a lot of 
issues for Jared Goff in that passing attack. Lay these points comfortably with Philly. Yeah, we'll see if uh, Dan Campbell can finally get that engine to turn over, if you will, Emery. But taking a look <laughs> uh, at, at Jalen Hurts, only player in NFL history with 4,000 passing yards and 1,000 rushing yards through his first 20 games. So for all the question marks, there has been pen plenty of prove it uh, on that film already for Hurts. We'll see how it looks this season. We do have more divisional action coming our way with an AFC East measuring stick between the Pats and the Fish. Dolphins are favored against the Patriots, as Akeem told us in our intro there, for the first time since week 15 of 2013. That Mike McDaniel offense, sure to be exciting, but it's prove-it time right now for Tua. Emery, how do you stack up the storylines into a winning pick here? Well, you look at the rosters, right? You want to rank these teams by who has the better roster like Kenny is going to do. When you look at the Patriots, in that division, pound for pound, they are last. Uh, the Jets have a better roster. The Dolphins definitely have a better roster. And we know the Bills do. And with that being a backdrop, let's look at the Dolphins in this game. I think their passing attack is much better. And their defense will cause a lot of problems for Mac Jones, who doesn't really have the arm strength to push it deep down the field vertically. And their one deep threat, Taquan Thornton, the rookie out of Baylor, is now out for, this, uh, for at least six to eight games. So for me, that is something that's going to be a problem in this matchup. I love the Dolphins in this spot. I'm going with the Patriots here, Emery, and I agree with you. The Dolphins have a slightly better roster than the Patriots, so the Patriots roster is dead last in talent in their division and one of the worst in the NFL this year. I went under on their win total. I have them the 25th offense and the 26th defense. One thing I do know, though, coaching does the – talent, the level of talent in the NFL is so close from top to bottom mm. that coaching can make a difference. And if there's one guy that can make a difference, it's Bill Belichick. And you give him this much time to prepare, I think he's the far better coach here. You're going to give me three points with him. I've got to take the Patriots here. All right, so Kenny's taking the Belichick edge as our guys go head-to-head -head on that pick. But, you know, there are certain gambling truths that we must hold near early in the season here. Few things have been sure than Jets fades in the month of September. They've lost 12 straight in the opening month of the season. That's 1-11 against the number as well. Kenny, just out of principle here, do we simply just ride this trend? Yeah, you know, trends don't pay the mortgage. Uh, you can't just ride a trend. <laughs> Fair enough. You can't just ride a, ride a trend blindly. But uh, when you have the better football team uh, in, the, in the Ravens, we're going to ride that trend just because we have the better team. Um, the Ravens, I think, are, 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 are definite a playoff football team. Love their offensive line. I got them ranked fifth in the NFL offensive line. Their defense, number six. The Jets offense, number 29 in the NFL. Their defense, number 28. This is a football team that's going to win three or four games this year. Let's take the Ravens here in game one. It was funny. I was on HQ a couple days ago saying the Jets could win nine games. The Jets fans loved that video. They loved all those comments <laughs> until they, I got to my point where I said the Ravens will beat the brakes off them in week one. It was like, oh, I can't agree with them about that. No, the Ravens will beat them in week one. Lay those points with Baltimore. You just got to stack up these key points. Who has a better quarterback? Check Ravens. Who has a better defense? Special teams. Definitely those who go to the Ravens. And who has a quarterback that can't evade pressure? That's the Jets. This is a bad matchup for, for uh, New York. I like the Ravens big here. You know, engagement and wagers often don't overlap. So we'll see if we can get both of those going for you here, Emery. Uh, usually, you know, I do the selling, and you guys give us great picks. But someone's got to sell me on this next one. Commanders and Jags. Uh, second crack for Doug Peterson here, who had to do plenty of reteaching with his franchise QB coming out to a bit of a false start under Urban Meyer. Carson Wentz on the other side. I don't know, Emery. I need you to add a little intrigue to this one for me. It, this was a tough game, and I feel like because it's such a sloppy fest between two teams, I like the Jags in this spot. When you look at Washington, you know, you have questions about their run game. You have questions about their quarterback play. You love the excitement and the youthful exuberance that Jacksonville presents on offense with their talent coming back at the end. Also with uh, Kirk out there, receiver. Trevor Lawrence taking a big step in year two. And their defense, I think, pound for pound, may be better than Washington when you look at all three levels. So I do like the Jags here. There's always that one week one upset. I think this is the week one upset of the year. Uh, Jags taking over the commanders. Yeah, this is a bad game. I, I'm I'm giving out Washington minus three in this game because I, I made the game six. I think that's what the betting line should be in the game. But I'm, I'm not in love with this game. I don't want to lay points with a bad team. And Washington still is bad. I got them ranked 17th offensively. But it's their defense that impresses me. Remember two years ago, three years ago, this this is the, one of the best defenses in the NFL people talked about. Last year they kind of took a step back. But they had the same players. They bring everybody back again. There's a very talented defense. They can lean their hat on that. They can also lean their hat on a pretty good offensive line. Uh, Jacksonville, um, just because they had a coaching change, 
I, I don't believe they're going to be that much better. I don't believe that, that they're going to be that much better of a football team because of the coaching change. I have their offense number 32 in the NFL. That's dead last. And I have their defense number 29. Um, got a big play on the win total under for the Jags this year. Yeah, can't say you sold me on those. Sorry about it. But uh, we will have full highlights and analysis on all games, including this one, this coming Sunday on HQ. There's no sales pitch necessary in the Queen City this week, guys. Baker versus the Browns. Massive chip on that now healthy shoulder and a nice streak here to support him. Browns 0-16-1 the last 17 season openers. You can barely get that one out without laughing. But sometimes, Kenny White, the best play you're telling us here is no play. Yeah, for me, the, the number's right on. And, you know, a lot of the analysts from Sportsline were, were really sharp, and they jumped on this early, and they took plus one with, with uh, Carolina, laid, laid even money or laid pick, and uh, got a good number on this. It's up to two and a half now. I think it's going to go up to three. And if I see three and a half, I might have to side with the bookmakers here and jump on that Cleveland bandwagon mm. and maybe try to root for them to get a win in the week one for the first time in 17 years. You know, if you remove both quarterbacks in this game, you're talking about Baker Mayfield and also Jacoby Brissett. These two teams are built very similarly. You talk about the run game being the forefront. Their defense is athletic. They can crowd the line of scrimmage. They can also get after the quarterback. They do have excellent pieces in the, in the secondary. But Cleveland's offensive line is much better. And now you throw in the quarterbacks. Who's going to have the better protection? I think Jacoby Brissett will. So I like the Browns in this spot. I'm taking the Browns in the points. I like the Browns to win this game. If you remove the quarterbacks, you're also talking about rugby. But uh, we're also going to be talking about the backfield <laughs> in this next matchup. Uh, new running mate here for Jonathan Taylor. He lines up next to Matt Ryan in Houston. Uh, Colts laying a big number here on the road. The Texans continuing to effort an identity, let's say. Totals 45 and a half, Emery. I, I know you're on favorites here in week one. Do you have the stomach for eight? I do because everyone talked all offseason about Davis Mills because he was completing a lot of passes. But when you go back and watch, a lot of those passes were at five yards depth of target. So he was basically throwing handoffs. So when you add the pressure that the Colts will bring up mm -hmm. front and the Colts will put you in a position where you have to score, I don't think the Texans can consistently go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Indianapolis. That's going to cost them at least two possessions. So I feel comfortable that they can win by double digits. I'm going to go over the total here in this game. I like the addition, obviously, Matt Ryan, a quarterback with Jonathan Taylor and that offensive line for the, for the Colts. I think they're going to be a well-oiled well machine early, and that's because Houston's defense is uh, going to be very easy defense to get through. I've got them ranked 31st in the NFL. Davis Mills was uh, serviceable at quarterback. Uh, I think he'll put up some points in this game in, in a come-from-behind manner, but it will be the Colts out in front in this game early and often. Kenny White and Emory Hunt always on the money. Stay put, fellas. More picks coming. Thank you. Taking a look at those plays here in the early action Thursday night and early Sunday. On Thursday, Bills Rams must see pre and post game right here on HQ as well. Sensing a bit of a trend here. Kenny White targeting totals in week one as we figure out who's who and what's what. And remember, what you buy is just as important as when you buy it. Some numbers will change as Kenny White urges you to take a couple of those overs right now before numbers balloon with money coming in. And taking a look at some other plays here, Pats, Dolphins, they're on opposite ends. If you're looking for consensus, Ravens is where you find it. No play in Browns and Panthers for Kenny. If that number gets any higher on the Panther side, let's say three, just out of principle, he might have to take some Browns exposure as well. In the Colts and the Texans, it's over again for Kenny. Colts for Emery. We're going to play our best guys, you know, when the season starts. And whoever those guys are, those guys are going to get the reps. There's going to be growing pains, particularly with younger players. And I appreciate this about Aaron. It's just the urgency to get some of this stuff corrected. He's the ultimate competitor. I think it's good for these guys to feel that. The bottom line is you need to do it the way the coach wants it done. And I find that when you're coachable and you learn it the way they want it, that's when you have the most success. This is going to be an explosive offense. I think Kirk Cousins at times, I've been very critical of him, but he's going to put up monster numbers in this offense with Kevin O'Connell. It just looks so good. I can't wait to go out there and actually, you know, show what we really have. We just got to really roll through one game at a time, but this league is too hard to be looking down the road when you got a really good opponent from our division staring right at us September 11th. And we are back on HQ talking that game and more. This hour presented by Capital One, Emory Hunt, Kenny White offering up their week one winners a week out. Guys, we got to talk NFC North. I'm, I'm a Midwest kid. It's near and dear to my heart. And 
on the surface at the top of that division. You got an MVP, just lost his top target trying to fend off a Minnesota team as we heard. Appears to have all the pieces in place, including the play caller, but perhaps the quarterback still the limiting factor. We're going to get an early season case study when the Vikes welcome the pack as one and a half point home dogs. Kenny, who gets the early seal of approval from you? Yeah, so this is a tough game, a mm -hmm. divisional game. But you know what? I'm going to go to something Emory, Emory used earlier, and he he picked the Bills over the Rams because Josh Allen's a better quarterback than Matthew Stafford. He's 100% correct. Josh Allen may be the best quarterback in the NFL right now with the, the talent that he has. But Aaron Rodgers is still number two. Uh, he is still the best, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Uh, he may not be with Devontae Adams, but you know what? He's going to make somebody a great receiver on this Packer team <laughs> because he's got the arm strength, he's got the accuracy, and he's just got the know-all, do-all. He's got the it factor, and he still does. So I think that's the edge here. It's Aaron Rodgers over uh, Kirk Cousins. You know, I just want someone to believe in me the, the same way prognosticators believe in Kirk Cousins in the preseason and in the offseason as he's going to lead the Vikings to the promised land. It's never going to happen. <laughs> so in this game, you just look at the better quarterback is Aaron Rodgers. And also, they can run a football like the Vikings can. But I love the offensive line of Green Bay, even if they're slowly working themselves back from injury. But I do like what they have up front. And defensively, they'll be much better in terms of getting to the quarterback. I still like the secondary. We'll see a couple of turnovers or two in this ball game, But I do like the Packers to win this one easily. Aaron Rodgers 7-0 in the seven games without Devontae Adams over the last three years. 19 touchdowns, one interception. We'll see if those numbers bear out across an entire season without him. Week one, also going to feature the first meeting between the Giants and the Titans in three seasons. The Brian Dable era underway as a pair of, let's say, aging but explosive backs face off. Home side here, lane five and a half. Total is a short one at 43 and a half. Can he side total or pass in this spot? I'm going to lay the side. I'll lay the points here with Tennessee. And again, I think... Uh, Better quarterback, uh, better offense, better offensive line, better defense uh, all around, and better special teams. So um, I, I think the Tennessee Titans are the better football team, uh, obviously, and a coaching edge as well. So I'll lay the points here in a non-divisional game. I hate laying points in the NFL, especially in week one. There's so much uncertainty. You don't know what's going to happen, so you got to be careful. But I'll lay them here. You know, both teams are very similar, similarly built. They have great running backs. They have solid offensive lines. Giants offensive line will be much improved this year. They have really good defensive fronts. Now, Tennessee's took a hit with the loss of Harold Landry. I think Tennessee gives, I give Tennessee the edge in the secondary because of their ball hawks across the board, but it will come down to quarterback play. And both quarterbacks are very inconsistent. Tannehill a little bit less more of a concern than Daniel Jones. So I see this one being a very close game. Three points is the most, I feel like. Five and a half is a little bit too much. So in that case, I'm taking the Giants and the points here because I see this one being a very close game. You guys made it very clear here over the first half hour. Uh, it is a quarterback's world, and we appear to just be living in it. And Kyler Murray, he's got the world on a string now after signing a $230 million extension. But we'll see if he's been in the film room or the game room. Sorry, I had to. Uh, cards welcome the Chiefs minus a cheetah. Another road favorite here, guys. Emery, who do you got? I mean, we also got to throw in offensive coordinator, Kyler Murray. I thought he called a great game in the preseason. <laughs> but in this one, you know, he's going to be without a lot of his big-time weapons. Uh, so you have to look at Kansas City. I love the Chiefs in this spot as well. They have replaced some of their losses in the offseason. They have the best offensive line in the AFC West. And on defense, I think they've gotten better in terms of how they are going to play initially because we know they play better as the season goes on they tend to get better on the spagnolo but i think we'll see them start the season how they finished i like the chiefs here to win uh, comfortably i think it's going to be one of the most fun games to watch because it's going to be an offensive explosion from both teams and i have the chiefs the number one offense and i have the cardinals the number two offense in the nfl and a lot of it has to do because of those offensive lines and their quarterbacks obviously because it is a quarterback driven league but the chiefs have the number one offensive line the, the cardinals the number three and defensively, I have both teams. I have the Chiefs in average defense, and I have the Arizona Cardinals. I don't know what happened to them, but since uh, Cliff Kingsbury has gone, been there, they went from a top 10 defense to a bottom five defense. Going to be a very high scoring year for the Cardinals this year. They're going to they're going to have to outscore teams to win games. And obviously, if they're going to try to win this game, they're going to have to outscore the Chiefs. I'm over the total here. Yeah, I'm highlighting Kelsey production and urgency when it comes to the Chiefs. Last year, they showed up at halftime and got away with it for the lion's share of the season. But without uh, the Cheetah out there, we'll see if...
there's going to be more urgency without Tyreek Hill to get going early. Uh, you can always sign me up for some AFC West football, guys, all season long. And full disclosure, I am holding both Raiders divisional tickets and a Derek Carr MVP future. Uh, you can copy that time code, save the clip for later. But the silver and black catching three on the road against a more likely MVP talent, let's say, in Justin Herbert and the Chargers. Kenny, where's the money we made at SoFi? Yeah, again, I, I, another over for me, and I, I really love what I'm seeing. Justin Herbert is the real deal. He's got the arm strength, and now he has the experience of a couple of years. <coughs> excuse me. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, the experience under his belt for the last couple of years. But he is the real deal. The arm strength, the accuracy. Uh, he has the offensive weapons around him. And the, and the Rams, the Rams, the, the Raiders do as well. Uh, they made the decision to go out and and stockpile some offensive talent. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Devontae Adams, one of the biggest pickups in the offseason. They didn't do that on defense, though. Their defense ranked 21st in the NFL. I think this is a high-scoring game. I think both quarterbacks go head-to-head, -head and they match score for score. Was that a fraudulent slip right there, Kenny, when you were talking the, the praises of the Chargers? Um, <laughs> listen, uh, w what I will say this, in, in, uh, first of all, I'm glad the league got this game week one because they played a fantastic capper to the end of last season the regular season but when you look at this game and this is what i noticed from the preseason i know you can't take a lot of what you saw in the preseason but the mindset of the raiders this year will be hey we are going to run the football a lot of teams talk about running the football and they think they could turn it on on a friday and add it to their game plan no it starts here in the summer the raiders will be able to run the football we still don't know if the chargers can stop the run that's going to be a big issue they couldn't stop the run in the preseason i know they added khalil mack i know they have talented weapons everywhere on his roster but if you can't stop the run that talented offense won't see the field a lot and it's going to put a lot of pressure on herbert so i like the raiders plus the points here i think we'll see the raiders leaning on that run game operate off play action take those timely shots deeper down the field you remember that raiders chargers game in the final week of the season did have big time pittsburgh implications as well i have screenshots of our guy bmac just going through it uh, as that game <laughs> transpired uh mac man will be in studio breaking it all down on sunday it should be a blast sunday night football gonna be a blast as well gonna showcase the bucks and the boys from jerry's world Start and stop preseason for Tom, terrific, but most notably, that Tampa O-line, uh, two big dings in the form of Ryan Jensen and Tristan Wirfs not going to be available. I'm looking at Micah Parsons' sacks props personally, but on the surface, Tampa still laying one and a half, totals a square 50. Emery, are you picking up what I'm putting down here? Absolutely. I'm taking the Cowboys in the points. They should have won this game last year. Uh, everyone counted out the Cowboys in that week one opener on Thursday night, but the Cowboys are going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tampa because they will do – exactly what you have to do against Tampa, which in, in which a lot of teams were afraid to do. You got to attack these corners vertically down the field. They have some options in the passing game. Yeah, they'll be, they'll be a bit banged up, but the Cowboys can throw this football vertically as long as C.D. Lamb out there, and he's a guy that can play all three receiver positions. He's going to eat. The tight end position is going to eat. That's going to open things up for Zeke Elliott and those guys to really get out there and have success as pass catchers coming out of the backfield. So I do like the Cowboys in this spot. I think they get revenge from last year's opener against the Bucs. Yeah, I think the number's right on for the side. Uh, and Tom Brady's going to get rid of the football quickly. We know he does. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was it, it is a, a ding to the offensive line of two and a half points to their power rating, but their, their offense still seventh best in the NFL. Uh, it's the Cowboy defense that I'm worried about, 19th. I'm going over the total here. I think it's going to be Dak and Tom Brady. They're going back and forth. I really trust the, the Cowboy offense in week one here. And I trust Tom Brady to be able to put the ball where he needs to put it and into the end zone. All right, guys, well, the longest wait of the week going to belong to Broncos and Seahawks fans. The latter having a welcome ex-wife back home with Russell Wilson, making his Bronco debut in Seattle in front of the 12s. This might be the QB change I'm most interested in because it seems like there's this notion that you add Russ and all your problems disappear. Now, Seattle might not be the most revealing challenge, but Kenny, can they stay inside that six? I think they can. I think you're going to get an um, amazing effort uh, by Seattle in this game, going up against uh, their ex-teammate uh, who left them. Uh, they're going to they're give great effort. And I think their defense has improved. I actually have Seattle's defense ranked slightly higher than the Denver defense. And Denver's defense, I think, slipped a little bit. So uh, you're going to get effort. You're going to get a divisional game. This is going to be a battle down to the wire. Um, I'm taking Seattle plus the points here at home. Russell Wilson is the magic elixir because those <laughs> Seahawks teams 
were 79, 79. Then you add Russell Wilson, all of a sudden they're winning games with Sidney Rice out there on the, on the outside and you uh, unknown receiver out of Stanford and Doug Baldwin, right? So yes, Russell Wilson will make this Broncos team a Super Bowl contender. And in this matchup, I do like the Broncos defense more so than Seattle's defense. So I slightly disagree with Kenny on that one. But when you talk about offensive big play potential, look at the receiving core of Denver, look at the backfield of Denver, and look at the quarterback of Denver. And Gino's going to do fine, but this is a tough matchup for him and the Seahawks team in week one. So I'm laying those six points with the Broncos. A lot of air miles early here for Russ, who was in Flushing to watch Serena's uh, finale just a couple nights ago. It's always hold and serve here with Kenny White and Emery Hunt. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, another look at those picks. Screenshot it. Thank us later. For the Packers and the Vikes, divisional matchup. Both of our guys on the Packers laying that short one and a half despite all the omissions. A Raj, 12, the two time reigning MVP. Still got plenty to get it done. There's Splitsville for the Giants and the Titans. Chiefs and Cardinals. It's an overplay for Kenny. A lot of overs here as uh, we try and figure out the uh, proper number to assign to some of these offensive sides. Kenny White says too low, too often. Over there, over in the Raiders Chargers, over in the Bucks Cowboys on that square 50. Then Broncos Seahawks rounding out the action. It's Seahawks for Kenny, Broncos for Emory. Do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.